First for our Sunday satsang is September 3rd, 2023. We're describing Manjri Bhav Sadhana, tasting Bhakti Ras to Manjri Bhav Sadhana. A reading from a book by Kunja Bihari, Das Babaji Maharaj. He's describing some things about some savas of the Manjris. He's quoting some different personalities, some songwriters. And he quotes Dina Krishnas, Siddha Dina Krishnas Babaji. He wrote a book called Pratanam, <coughs> Pratanamrita Tarangani. And he has a prayer for Seva to Radha Krishna Yuva. He said, Oh Radha Krishna, after you have finished enjoying your amorous pastimes, you sit quietly in self-contained happiness. I will serve you at that time along with other Sakis. Sri Rupa Manji will glance at me to indicate a save I should do. From that glance of Rupa Manji, I should arrange your clothing and ornaments. I will bring saffron, musk, sandal, camphor, pond, clitter, cat, 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 Sindor, and many other things for your pleasure. I will cool you with refreshing breezes from a Chamara fan. O Rubandri, O Manjalali, be merciful and please give me seva like this. Make me one of your dasi, make me a dasi of one of your dasis. This is the only prayer of this slowly Krishna Das. It's actually Krishna, this is Siddha Krishna, the famous Siddha Krishna from Govardhan, wrote a book of prayers called Parthanamrita Tarangani, ways, ways of Nectarian Prayers from the famous Siddha Krishna. So the main point we learn from this prayer is that communication in the spiritual world is very subtle. The movement of an eyebrow or movement of the lips or a finger. It's called ingita. I-N-G-I-T-A, ingita, means indication. It's interesting. It's like the word indication we have in English. Ingita, I-N-G-I-T-A. It means a subtle suggestion, uh, unexpressed, unexpressed intention. So this word is often there in prayers about Seva for Radha and Krishna. Well, well Vishaka give me an indication that I should do this service. He just looks at me and in her look I know what she means. So you can see how subtle and how sensitive the communication is between members of the spiritual world like Radha and Krishna and Sakis Manjus. They don't have to say, they can communicate they can speak so many things through the eyes. Specific savers they can communicate just by looking. One look means get a charm of wit. The other look means, you know, decorate me. Another look means go find Krishna. Just from a glance. There's another Vaishnava songwriter, I mean, devotional writer called Vaishnava Das. He says, oh, Vrishabhadananini, when will Guna Manjri take me into her association? After you and Krishna are exhausted from rasa dancing and sitting together on a raised dais platform to rest, you will feel dizzy and you will be perspiring. Then by mercy of Guna Manjri, I will, I will get a hint, I will get her hinting glance another Hint, hint is given. I, along with Rati Manji, will come and fan you with chamaras. <coughs> I'll wash, wash and dry your faces and feet. 
Arumavantri will offer me some pan to place in your mouth. Now Sarada and Krishna. By my seva, your fatigue will soon be removed and you'll feel comfortable and relaxed. Vaishnavas prays that this desire will be fulfilled because what could be worse than non-fulfillment? So in the eyes of this great devotee Vaishnavas, he's praying for seva in his manjri through the specific seva during Rasa dance. And he's saying, other than seva to Radha and Krishna, if I don't get this service, then why should I live? So this now, this whole discussion about Ross, that was a little discussion about Lundry's kind of diversion. Now he gets back on topic. Now he starts talking about Sattvic Bhavas. Because when you talk about Anubhavas, when the love between Radha and Krishna is stimulated, then that, that stimulation of love, they express Anubhavas. And some are voluntary physical expressions. They're called Udbhat Udvastra. Udvasvaras. An involuntary physical expression are called sattvic bhavas. So sattvic bhavas and udvasvaras come under the category, or both under the category of anubhavas. Ano means there are bhavas, sentiments, feelings, and expressions of feelings that follow the love when it's stimulated of the viva, Radha and Krishna. So sattvic bhava is sometimes defined as a separate category but it's actually also an anabhav. Because he's crying, trembling, perspiring, hair standing, and then color of skin changing color. These are the astasavic bhavas. So Vakirashri just you know, describes the sattvic bhavas. There's a f f the five different, these five different bhavas, feelings and sentiments and expressions of feelings, are what co combines together to to create the experience of rasa. Madhuri Ras, Vatsavi Ras, Sakya Ras, Vasya Ras. So Rupa Goswami defines when one's consciousness is overcome by one of the stairati, the dominant mood of love, or a seven, secondary emotion of love, like Vira Ras and Abhuta Ras, they're called Gona Rasas. The condition of one's mind is called sattva, which means existence, being. And when that expression becomes, that emotion ex accelerates and saturates the consciousness, it creates changes in the physical body. So now he describes savic bhavas and the mandris. They come, the, the mandris experience savic bhavas, in other words, there's a microphone box or something. The, uh, the manjis have experienced subic bhavas like trembling or perspiring. When? So he's saying, when they're absorbed in appreciation of Radha and Krishna's leaders and emotions, those uncontrolled involuntary expressions of the emotionally overwhelmed consciousness of Radha Krishna, called Sattvic Bhavas. In other words, there's a transfer of emotions. The emotions of Radha and Krishna are transferred into the Manjuris, into the Sevadasi. So now Rupa Goswami lists the eight Asasattvic Bhavas. Becoming stunned, which is stomach, perspiring, which is swayed, and then he says, revelation, hair standing and choking on the vice, uh, swara beta is called, and trembling and uh, discoloration of the change of the color of the skin and crying and fainting. And here's an example of the manjuris experiencing all eight of these subic bodies. Because generally we're thinking of Sattvic Bhavas, we're thinking of relation to Radha and Krishna. But the Manjris, because they're Bhav Talabhya, the woman with Radha and Krishna's loving sentiments, it's called Tat Tat Bhavi Chaknika. They want to be one with their love and sentiments. They're also one with the experience of that love and sentiments, which transforms them into different physical and emotional ways 
which are one of the ways is Southern Fathers. So now, Prabhupada and the Saraswati, Vrindavan Mahimamrita, he describes how the Manjis experienced all eight Sattvic Bhavas. This is a shloka, doesn't tell the number. May these Manjis who constantly worship Radharani by their service manifest eternally in my heart. The bees, the bees, honey bees of the minds of the Manjris are always buzzing with intoxication from the hun tasting the honey of the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. And due to the intense love of the Manjris for Leela Yugal, their eyes are sometimes filled with tears. Their bodies are covered with thrill bumps. And sometimes the Manjris faint or become stunned by their feelings of ecstatic affection. But because of this, they are regretful because of the disturbances created in their Savior. He says here that they experience eight, all us accepting bhavas. What we read here is we four. It is well known Although these ecstatic reactions to internal feelings are often considered to be proofs of high spiritual attainment and signs of the uncontrollable joy brought about by pure bhakti, devotees don't, aren't aspiring to attain these pleasurable experiences. Indeed, they become angry <laughs> at the ecstasy. <laughs> it's hard to conceive because we're always so much in misery of material consciousness that we experience some joy somehow or other, some way or other, that we want to hold on to that joy and lock it up and keep it with us all the time. But unfortunately, in the spiritual world, the Manjis are cursing the joy <laughs> and cursing the ecstasy. Because they create some temporary, uh, temporary block in their seva or obstruction to the loving Seva to Radha Krishna. For example, if you're fanning Radharani in a country and you start trembling because you're experiencing something about it, you can drop the fan, drop the charmer, you drop your Seva. Your ecstasy, that's good, you're enjoying ecstasy. But you drop the fan, your Seva is Katamogya. So the primary focus of Mantra is Seva, Radharani Seva. It's called a Kanda Seva. It means no break in the Seva. We're always looking for a break in the Seva. <laughs> we always say, when's this Seva over? Like someone says, you have to do the Seva. The first question is, how long will it take? <laughs> <laughs> It'll take forever. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is, so this Manji is a one, a Kanda Seva. 24-7, unbroken, unbroken, Uninterrupted, uninterrupted seva, not interrupted by ecstatic transcendental bliss. It comes, it will come, definitely come, but it can consider an obstacle to the seva. They don't have any independent desire for a personal enjoyment. So he quotes another, I guess, prayer from Buddha Namaste. May those mandris of Ma Radharani manifest always in my heart. What does that mean, manifest? Does that mean in your heart you should see a little Rupa Mandri running around? In your heart you should see, in your heart you should close your eyes and see a little Rati Mandri running around? No, it means their Bob. Their Bob should fill your, your their Bob should become your, your Bob. Their mood, Bob means mood, sentiment, feelings. See, feelings of Seva, mood of Seva. That should become our mood and feelings of Seva. But they want that, we want their Bob to manifest. Just like we see some nice person, we, we, we appreciate their qualities. We don't want to put them in our heart, we want to put their qualities in our heart. They, they have their, them and not me. You know, I ain't got enough problems with me, I want to put you, <laughs> deal with you too. <laughs> but I like some good qualities you have. I like to add those to my my repertoire 
I add those to my own qualities. So that's called depreciating association and taking on the good qualities of other devotees. There's a verse in Padma Puran. I read it one time in English. It's a long book, a big book. But there's very interesting things there. It said when you meditate on advanced spiritual personalities, I don't know how they came up with this mathematical calculation, but they said you meditate on advanced <laughs> spiritual personalities, then one sixth of their good qualities comes inside of you. And there are verses in the 11th canto which talk about the, neg the downside, the negative side. When you, when you criticize other people, anyone, devotee, non devotee, whoever, you criticize and point out bad qualities or faults in others, all those qualities, bad qualities and bad faults come inside you. There's verse in the 11th canto. Recorded in Sandara Bhakti Sandara also. So the idea is by absorbing yourself in someone else, either positively or negatively, you get a positive result or a negative result. That's the conclusion. So it's best to always observe yourself in Hari Guru and Pure Vaishnavas. So then you'll become like Hari and Guru and Pure Vaishnavas. And now, because this is a section on Sadhik Bhavas, and this is a book about Manjri, Manjri Sru Nirupan, what is a Manjri, what is a Sru. So the, he's describing Sadhik Bhavas, and he mentioned briefly Nectar of Devotion. Now he's creating his own essay here, Kundriyari, by quoting different books by different Acharyas, like Vrindavan Maya Mamita. So now he quotes Krishna Bhava Namrita by Vishnu Chakravarti. To give further description of how the mandris are experiencing Sadhik Bhavas. Sometimes Radha and Krishna reverse their roles in their erotic pastimes. Radharani, like a flash of golden lightning, she attacks Krishna. In other words, Radharani becomes the aggressor. Usually the man is the aggressor and the woman is the aggressor. <laughs> so Rārāṇī attacks Krishna due to the inducement of Cupid. Rārāṇī adapts an aggressive male mood. Seeing this, the Mandris watching through the Kundra, windows of the Kundra, start crying in ecstasy. And I watched the windows of the country with their tears. <laughs> I don't know what kind of windows they have there, but I don't think they have glass windows, <laughs> but whatever, bamboo windows. So that's what it says, that's what it translation but They're crying ecstasy which washed, washes the windows of the country. So when the boys come here to clean the ashram, they use something called Windex. The next time we have mod cleaning, I'm going to tell everybody, just use your tears and clean the, <laughs> clean the glass windows with your tears. <laughs> Save money on Windex. <laughs> you know, first you have to your budget through. When you come to clean the ashram on the Kasi, ashram clean, you enter your mandri through, and in your mandri through, then you cry, Ashu, Prem Ashu, and with those tears of Prem, you wash the windows. Wash all the brudge and off the windows. So this is from Stavamala. So this is all examples of mandris going ecstatic. <laughs> so finally, <laughs> we get some ecstasy. I said save his bliss, remember? In Salamala, Rupa Goswami gives an example. Oh Krishna, where will you place your chewed tambo, bale nut, in Radharani's mouth? And Radharani will become angry and say, Where do you think I am? Am I supposed to eat your contaminated uchishta? Then Radharani will throw it away. <laughs> Pretty fired up, Radharani. 
Appreciate your kisses, tumble into our eyes, mouth, you sit down, what? Ah, yeah. Hey. This is your chishka, I don't, I don't want it. This is Rula Strong, he's told them all of I'm not making it up. <laughs> Friend of the Mudgee thinks, the Mudgee thinks, I can understand that the purpose of your doing this is to give me your prasadam. As I chew the leftover veal nut and think of your mercy, my whole body will tremble and shiver in excitement. When will such a day come? Kami habi bolo seidin amar. Kami habi bolo seidin amar. This is a prayer of Ragmar. Somebody else on Vladimir, they're praying, when will it? I stop thinking of this. <laughs> Shirinama Rushi Atmarada Gucci, whatever it is. <laughs> so Ragmar, you're praying. Well, at Kavi Havi Bala Seydin, Seydin Amar, when will my day come? Well, I get the, the Prasadi Pan of Krishna roaring spit out, rejected and spit out. Appearing, appearing to reject Krishna's love offering, but actually, she re roaring rejected Krishna's love offering. But she turned the rejected offering from Krishna into a voluntary offering to her manjuris. So rejection on one side may be acceptance on the other side. Krishna got rejected and the manjuris got accepted. So who's the lucky winner here? The manjuris. The And Radharani also. Because he put Krishna in his place. <laughs> he was, he was, Krishna was proudly giving, you know, surely I really want my, want my chewed pot. <laughs> so he kisses her and he says, oh, yeah, catch the kitchen. And then, <laughs> what? There's three billion, three billion suckies waiting for us in the rest of them. And Rai just fits it out. <laughs> Jai Rai 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 so three million gobis will gladly, lovingly, ecstatically accept Krishna's offered pond, but not Radharani. Now Raghunath Das, there's two prayers from Slavali by Das Goswami about Mandris showing Savik Bhavas. When will that time come when the two best dancers of Cupid, Radha and Krishna, will be drenched in their own perspiration and beautified by their hair standing erect on their bodies as they're being tired of dancing rasa dance. And this insignificant soul will use a charmer to fan them with artistic move, hand movements. I'm just, you know, I see some of these pajaris uh, in different temples. It's interesting to watch. Especially if you're not the same as charmer. You go to different t temples and you watch Pajaris over at Chamara and you pick up some tips. <laughs> How do you need to say <laughs> Like once I, uh, one of my disciples, their save is paying right on his feet. So I said, you should go to, and they're a Western person, they don't know so much about this. So, so I said, you should go, you have any Indian friends, go to Gajendra Goswami and watch his wife paint her feet. <laughs> <laughs> And watch how she does it, so you get a feel for it. You see, ask her questions. What are you mixing? How do you, do you put, use your fingers? Use a paintbrush? Use a cloth? How do you put the lac dye? Yeah, you have to. You should get into the details. So some pajaris, you go around Raman and watch how fancy they do the charmer. <laughs> and you go around Raman and different pajaris. Then you see who's fancy, who's not fancy. Then you go that one. Rada Bala, they're very fancy, you know. Monkey Yard, they're not fancy at all. But, you know, so they like, you know, they do things with a charmer. <laughs> so then you go home and you practice with your charmer. <laughs> 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 Sounds silly, but it's done, it's done. I know people have done that. <laughs> so, when the Manjuri is watching, she's saying, well, I do this 
the way I'm defending Radha and Krishna, I, I'm crying tears of joy. I noticed another one from Savali by Raghunathas. I meditate on the slightly smiling Radha and Krishna as they fight in Cupid's battlefield. As I meditate on Radha and Krishna, my body becomes soaked from head to toe in perspiration and tears. My body is discolored and hairs are standing on end. In this way, I am experiencing all the eight ecstatic bodily states. So, so it's literally only listing Shwe and Ashu, uh, Varna, Vipa to it's only listing one, two, four, but she's saying I'm experiencing all eight. And then in Radhavan Shambhu, there's a passage of Manjri's experiencing Sadhik Bhavas. One Manjri, while fanning Krishna with the end of a sari, so if you're in a situation where you forgot your chamara, like sometimes you go somewhere and you forget your chavis, what do you do? Shut out your fingers. Like Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya shut out his fingers, he didn't shut out his mouth. So you go somewhere and you forget your chamara. You just start to pick up your sari and start making a fan. So she was fanning with the end of her sari while the bangles on her arm jingled musically. Then, due to the, the manji was ecstatically trembling, the cloth slipped from her hands. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that, that was racist. <laughs> it slipped from her hands. But she wasn't noticing this due to her absorption. She continued. <laughs> <laughs> she was so absorbed around Krishna. She, uh, the cloth was, she dropped it and her hand kept moving like this. That's called a hand fan. <laughs> she was fanning with an empty hand. So now he caught Sri Krishna's bhajan about Ram Krishna e eating lunch and Madhyan Lila in Radhakun. O oh, Chandramukhi Radharani, when will that day come when I go to a kunja at Radhakun and sit down a place and set a place for Krishna to sit down? I will set a glass of water there for Krishna. Then Krishna will come and sit down and I will carefully feed him, feed Krishna. This is a manjri praying. The manjri is feeding Krishna at Radhakun. He's praying, the mantra is praying around. When will that day come? Well, I'll go in the kunja and I'll sit Krishna down. I'll give him a glass of water and he'll sit down and I'll carefully feed him, but my hand will be trembling. I'll give him different fruits and vegetables as well as ghee soaked rice. Listen, ghee soaked rice. <laughs> For all the cooks out there. <laughs> As I am serving Krishna fruits, the jewel decorating my nose will be swinging. Yes. Seeing this, Krishna will become absorbed in my swinging nose jewel. <laughs> he tried to eat, he hypnotized by the mantra, no, nose for all. It's going, it's hanging, going, swinging a little bit because he's going so sort of, mm. <laughs> It's amazing meditation. <laughs> See, Krishna would come absorbed in my, my, my swinging to Ostro. Mara Mongo, seeing this, would laugh and say to Krishna, when is overtaking you, my friend, at this important time of meal taking? 
because from Mount of Mongol there's nothing nothing can distract this meditation <laughs> on food. He's this totally honored honored John. He's totally meditating on honor, honor means food, greens, on a don not on a don, on a jan. He's totally meditating on the food. And he explains that when he's eating and, and Krishna go in the she go in the middle of Rita. Krishna asks Madamanga, Madamanga, what do you know about Ras? <laughs> he said he said, When I see when I see tasty food soaked in ghee, my hair stands on end. <laughs> when I contemplate the beautiful taste of sweet rice, my sunks are my, I start perspiring. <laughs> And when I taste Pecora's dipped in pineapple chutney, I start trembling. So he describes how he eats and experiences Asasavik Babas. <laughs> so there's no question of Mother Mother getting distracted by the swinging nose for all the bottom of Mandri's nose. A Christian's anything to do with women, uh, whether they're 12 years old or 14 years old, Krishna can easily get distracted. <laughs> and it's not unlike most men in this world also. <laughs> as soon as they see a girl that's 12 or 13 or above, uh, plus, <laughs> then, then they're, they're not paying attention to their french fries and milkshake. You know? <laughs> so Krishna's eating Hey, she's pretty good. And dude, <laughs> and mom says, "Hey, what do you think? What you eat, man? What do you think?" Because <laughs> when Chris eats, mom and uncle is always sitting with him eating. When he's doing other, when he's having rati kale or kunjali, mom and uncle goes out to the to the fruit orchard to eat bananas. <laughs> there's, there's fruit orchards around the kunjas. You just read the description. The kunjas are around the kun. There's fruit or, fruit orchards. Pomegranates, mangoes. So as soon as Krishna gets intimate, <laughs> then Mama says, "Excuse me, I'm going to go now." Okay, go. Figure it out. <laughs> Grab bananas and mangoes, and then everything's over. He says, right, "I think you're going to feed Krishna now." Here it comes in. You see, Madhuri's going, "Okay, hey Krishna, oh you're back." Okay, sit down. <laughs> Just like sometimes, I've I've been having I've been eating here, and somebody showed up. I said, oh, you want to sit down and eat with me? He said, no, it's when so he comes. Yeah, it's, it's closer, so then you, it's suddenly your lunch got cut in half. You know? <laughs> 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 there you go. Culture first. So, uh, <laughs> among us laughing. He said, what's wrong with you, buddy? <laughs> Why are you getting distracted looking at this cute little manjri when you should be absorbed in eating? And then, then <laughs> Mama Mama goes on. You, Krishna, you're trembling uncontrollably while eating your pakoras. And that's your eating has been obstructed. I think you should put all these, all these cakes and cream-filled puris on my plate. And then you'll be more relaxed and can focus on your asana of meditation. <laughs> when Radharani hears Madhavanga's joking words, she will laugh aloud. She'll laugh loudly in happiness, along with all the other suckies. Oh, Radharani, when will I see your laughing face? I will get so much pleasure, hairs of my body will stand on end. So that's it for today. Next week we'll discuss about Vyavachari Bhavas, which are transient feelings that come and go. They're also called Sanchari. Sanchari chari means move and they're feelings that move. They come, they move in and move out. They come in and create certain excitement, certain feelings, and they go away and the feelings recede and disappear. Okay, that's that's fine.